Well, we are someplace new today. We are actually in Columbia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and we are at Burning Bridge Antiques. We've only got an hour before I have to leave and go pick up the kids from school, but we're gonna give it our best shot and see what we can find that we can buy and flip for a profit. So here we go. Okay, this one is Ooh, look at those pelicans. Oh, here you are. Sheep and sweater. right back there um, I'm trying to think who he's probably made by he's he might be made by Morton he could also be by Grindley he doesn't have any eyebrows though so that's kind of throwing me off a little bit he is delightful Stangle bird Now a duck down there. Lucite bird pen. Now that is interesting, and it's thirty percent off. Hmm. I also love that. Oh, opal is really pretty. That dog back there. Leah Stein, 125. That dog is fantastic. And the cat. Oh my. 30% off. Yeah. Oh, Pesci dolls. Eight dollars. I'll have to get those Kokeshi dolls out of there. She worked up in um, New York. Okay, wow. With the designers and stuff like that. Well, the jewelry. Runway is clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and I love that as well. Yeah, I'll take all of these ones. Okay. Except for the lady, I'm not really that impressed with the lady. Okay. The animals are great. Okay. Here, I can grab that one. Hello, <laughs> look at them. 25. Is he a book thing? Oh my gosh, look at him. Look at them all. It's like a whole tribe of clowns. Martini glass. They're kind of fun. Maybe I'll buy two of them. I've, I've never really bought and sold Murano clowns before. But also, how do I know they're Murano? This looks like an ashtray. Because of these little rests right here, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'll buy one. I will buy one. He's got a good quality about him. Alright, let's go this way. Oh, here's Tanya's booth. Some of this looks familiar. Not really. Her style looks familiar, though. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I love those lamps. I 
I love her style. Maybe because we have very similar styles. <laughs> the difference is she knows how to pull it all together. Mine's just in boxes. For the glass. We. Oh wow, look at that light. 195 she's got on that. That is so much fun. These chairs. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, let's bring this up upstairs and uh, add it to our pile. All right. Well, I was just trying to find the restroom. And I'm, I keep getting distracted by the glass. Oh my gosh. Look at the black banana. The Melfiore. Oh, stunning. Unfortunately, there's no percent off. Otherwise, maybe even at 20% off. I might consider You know, I might. I might consider it. Oh my gosh. I'm not fussed right now for the bathroom. I'm trying to find the restroom. Oop. Instead, I found some TV stuff. What is that? What is that? Is it treasure crops? No, it looks like it's made of wood. $50. Vintage hand carved tiki god bookends. Oh my gosh. They're a little too high for resale. Otherwise, I would consider them for our booth. Yeah, I agree. Funky green art pottery teapot. That's delightful. I think this is the last piece of the day right here, this beautiful Moe beaded necklace. Um, 50% off. The detail on this bead is just absolutely stunning. like that we are done shopping for the day i didn't film a wrap up for this because i figured i'd roll it right into a haul like we're doing right now um our total spend was 935 dollars now i know that's probably shocking for a lot of people um and a lot of my viewers have expressed that i would never spend 935 dollars so i can't go to the antique mall but if you break it down that was 21 items and there's no reason why someone can't go in and buy one of those items to flip for a profit. I just could not resist buying all of those items to flip for a profit at once. And it totaled up to $935. So I'm going to break it down for you guys because that is a lot of money. And I'm going to let you know what each item was and how much I can expect to profit on them. So let's do that. Uh, I don't actually have the items right here in front of me, but I am going to put photos of the items right here because I already have them listed up on eBay. I did that this weekend. I was very proud of myself, but I have the receipt. So we're going to go down the receipt and I'm going to talk a little bit about the items. Um, so the first item is blown glass. Okay. So this might be a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be, but we'll get through it. The blown glass piece, I believe was the perfume bottle. It was a beautiful kind of opaline alabastro perfume bottle bottle it was I believe Murano but not 100% positive on that so I did list it as art glass which was really cool about this piece is as soon as I hit it with a black light the green ring just like turned vibrant it was so cool with the black light um that piece I paid $18.99 for and for that piece I would probably expect to get $45 to $65 for that so that is your perfume bottle um, the next piece we have on here is a brown bowl. Did we buy a bowl? I don't recall buying a bowl. We paid $2.50. Oh, it was the bulldog. See, this is kind of a game, really. Um, this is a brown bulldog, and it was made by Cecile Baird, and I recognize the name on the bottom of the bulldog because I have found pieces by Cecile Baird in the past, and it's made out of clay, polymer clay, and her pieces typically sell for $18 to $25. So I recognized it right away. It was $2.50, and I wasn't going to say no to that. Oh, there was discounts on this stuff. I should... 
should mention discounts. Um, <laughs> the perfume bottle was was actually seventeen dollars and nine cents, and the bulldog was two dollars. I'll just from here on out, I'm just gonna give you the price with the discount. Um, the black vase. I have not listed that yet. It was just a really neat vase. It was black and white, and I liked the contrast of it. Uh, I didn't recognize any specific maker, and it could possibly just be a hobbyist piece, but it was dated 1960s, so it's mid-century, and it was cool. I paid $2 for that. For that piece, I would probably expect to get $15 to $20. So not a huge profit item, but still, it was pretty neat, and I'm digging the mid-century vibes on that. Next, a lot of people were asking, why were you so excited about this? It was the yellow wear cat smoking piece. And the reason I was so excited about that is because it was yellow wear. It was old. And I just, for $65 with a discount, it was $58.50 when all was said and done. I just, I was really excited about it that because I knew the potential to make a profit. Um, so I paid $58.50 for that piece and for that, those pieces I would expect it would probably go upwards of $120. For a piece like that probably $150 to $250. It was made by um, Bernard Block and it dates between 1870 and, 18, or 1870 and 1910. So it's just a really neat piece. Um, I believe it was for cigars. You would put your cigars in the barrel on the back and it has the match striker on the front and a little place to put matches. So very cool old antique piece. And uh, when I saw that price for only 65, 58 with the discount, I geeked out just a smidge. Let's be honest. <laughs> the Cranberry Fairy Light. Fairy lights are really hot right now. I don't know what's driving it, but they seem to be very popular right now. My fairy lamps are, are selling very well. And so I spotted the Mary Gregory fairy lamp. And even without that, that influence on the market that's somehow driving the fairy lamps up, I knew at $40 that was a good fairy lamp. And there was a discount on it. It sold, I, I paid $36 for it. Um, that fairy lamp is old. It was an antique fairy lamp. Um, it had a Mary Gregory style. The Mary Gregory style is a very old style. It's been it's been continued to be reproduced by Westmoreland and Fenton, and they still use the Mary Gregory style, but it originated back in the 1800s, I believe, maybe 1700s. But in any case, it's, it's just that silhouetted white enamel style of a little boy or a little girl. Very cool. But this particular fairy lamp was old. It's probably 1800s. Cranberry glass, beautiful. You can see actually they, they marked both the lid and the base to say, oh, these two pieces go together. They both have numbers on them. Um, that piece right there would typically sell for 75 to to $100. And so I knew I had to have that for only 36 bucks. Um, now the little Japanese, my birds are excited. It's morning. It's actually like eight o'clock in the morning trying to rush through this. <laughs> um, the little uh, Japanese kitten with the salt. It's, it's Some people call it a salt texture. Other people call it a sugar texture, but it's like this little texture on top. I paid $4 for that. And I believe I could probably get $8 to $12 for that. It's not a huge profit item, but I think that it was adorable and I was okay with that. We've also got the little spaniel spaghetti dog. The reason it's called spaghetti is because the texture on the ears, a lot of the times you see them as poodles and not necessarily as spaniels. So I paid five bucks for that and I would expect probably to get 15 to 20 dollars for that because there is a huge collector's market for spaghetti poodles and creatures. I know because I have a collection boxed up somewhere because I used to collect them used to and now I'm like oh maybe I should let them go but they're in a box somewhere and I'm not really ready to let them go yet I've got elephants and mice and um, the whole menagerie of animals uh, we've got uh, this cat figurine we got two cat figurines I think that this was the the lion I called it a lion we paid ten dollars for that and um, for that figurine, I would probably expect 18 to 24. It has an original sticker on it. It's really cute. It's got all its fur. Um, that, that one was pretty adorable. Uh, we've got the Murano Clown. This was kind of 
there's occasionally when I'm out at the antique malls, I will buy items that are just kind of maybe I can make some money on those. And, and I like throwing those items in because they help me learn and they help me gauge how well items are going to do. So I threw in the Murano clown just to see, hey, maybe I could try to sell a Murano clown. I've never sold a Murano clown before that I know of, um, but I decided to throw in a Murano clown. So this Murano clown, I wasn't sure yet if it was Murano when I purchased it, but after going online and looking at some of the other clowns, the base was reminiscent of Murano. And so I felt comfortable calling it a Murano clown. Um, I suspect it was an ashtray based on the little indents for you to set your cigarette. They were little cigarette rests, but it could also be a dish for anything you want it to be. I paid $27 for that. And honestly, I'm not sure how much it would sell for. I would expect if I was just to guess, it would be 45 to 65, but that's a guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see how that does. Um, we've got a hand painted is a hand painted oh I know what the hand painted is the hand painted is the dragonfly cup I did buy the dragonfly cup I know there was a little confusion there because I showed it and I said we have to get a key and then there was no follow-through I, I didn't have that follow-through of here we are getting it out of the case we're buying this um, <laughs> the dragonfly cup I absolutely fell in love with it I suspect very strongly that it is Moser but I had a hard time saying that it was Moser, so I did not call it Moser. I believe I called it Bohemian Glass. It is antique. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. The enameling on it is just phenomenal. It's got a dragonfly. It's got florals. It's about this big, but it is personalized, and it says Edith. So this was another item that was kind of a wild card, and I like the wild cards. I like the wild cards. Usually a wild card, I can expect I might make my money back on this, but it could also be good could also be really good so wild cards are sometimes fun and um, when I have the, the money to spend on wild cards I will uh, but the wild card was the dragonfly actually there's a few more wild cards in here but the dragonfly um, was neat uh, and there there was no damage on it which was really surprising a lot of the times there will be flea bites around the edge there there was maybe to the touch you could maybe feel something but to the sight you couldn't really see much at all so I paid $60 for that. That was like a huge drawn out explanation just to say I paid $60 for the dragonfly because everyone was like, how much was it? How much was it? It was $60 after the discount. And that's why it was a wild card because I feel like I may have overpaid, but the dragonfly was kind of what prompted me to spend that much money because it has a dragonfly and dragonflies are desirable. However, it is also personalized. so. That to me says, uh, maybe the fact that it's personalized is gonna bring it down. I don't know. Edith is a really cool name. Maybe someone will be like, I like the name Edith. I'll buy that cup. I don't know, I guess we'll see. <laughs> All right, um, the Gustavsburg vase by Wilhelm Cage. I was really excited when I found that. Um, mostly just because I like stuff that is marked Gustavsburg. I believe that uh, Lisa Larson, Laura Larson, Lisa Laura Larson, um, produced uh, for Gustavsburg. A lot of those figurines, we have the cats, uh, we have the dogs. I love, I, I don't know what it is about this, it's just so quality, you know what I mean? And so I saw it in the case and I was like, what is that? It's beautiful. And then to see that, that sticker on the bottom was just wowzers. It had the silver inlay on it and um, it was made by Wilhelm Cage, I believe, around the 1930s. So it's kind of Art Deco in style, and it's got the, the green glaze on it. It's very heavy. It's surprisingly heavy, but um, that was just an amazing piece. It's marked on the bottom Argenta, and Argenta is indicative of silver. Argenta, like um, for Murano, you would have Argent... Now I'm like having a moment. Um, Argento. Argentin, well, it basically describes the silver flecks that you find in Murano. It's also Argent, um, it's eight o'clock in the morning. I need another sip of coffee. Whew. All right, let's just keep going. Um, I paid $120 for that after the discount. I would expect that piece to go upwards of $250. And that's another thing I wanted to touch on. And I knew that when I got to this piece, I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, a lot of people say that if you buy something for resale, you have to double your money. 
I feel like that might be the case with smaller items. I don't usually follow that rule. I feel like it's a good rule to have, to want to buy something and at least double your money. A lot of people say triple your money, and that's important. But when you're spending $120 on something and you can make $100 on it, I feel like $100 is a good profit. I like making $100. You know, if I spend $300 on something and I make $150, I'm happy with that. I don't necessarily have to double my money. I just like making $150. Um, so I don't know if I'll necessarily, well, yeah, I will double my money, but but I just, I wanted to kind of make that point with you guys that, that when you start buying things that are more valuable sometimes you're not always going to double your money but sometimes you're going to make more money if if you if you plan it right is what i'm saying so um 120 for that piece and i would expect to get upwards of 250 dollars for it because um it is a really nice piece and it's a larger piece i did notice that um the wilhelm cage pieces with the fish are, are usually the higher selling pieces of that line, the Agento line. So that's something to be on the lookout for if you ever come across those pieces. Uh, we got the frog dishes. We're moving right along, moving right along. <laughs> we got the frog dishes, the enamel frog dishes. They were out of that same um, glass case. We got a pair of frog enamel dishes and I believe they were Anne Marie Davis. I, I, if I remember correctly, um, there were a pair of them. Um, typically one of her plates will sell for about $20, but because we have a pair, I'm expecting $35 to $45 for those, and we paid $18 for the pair of them. Uh, there was a little silver toned. It was not actually silver. It was probably silver plated. Silver plated ram trinket dish also in that glass case. It was interesting because I have found comparable pieces that are brass. This one is a silver plate. So I liked it a little bit more because it was silver plate. Uh, we paid $36 for that. I would probably expect to get, you know, now that I realize I paid 36 for it, I was gonna say I would probably expect to get 45 to $65 for that. So we might make our money back on that. I don't think I even looked at the price. I was just like, you know what, I really like this. So. There you go. Sometimes I get a little carried away and I buy things just because I like them. <laughs> and also, I think I'm used to shopping at Goodwill where everything's really cheap and I get carried away. All right, so the next few items, let's go through the next few items. These were kind of wild cards because I had never seen anything like this before. And these are pins by Leah Stein. Um, and they were just, I, was, I loved the style of them. They were, and, and I've been trying to get more and more into jewelry. So there were four of them. There were two panthers, there was a terrier, and there was a fox. And from what I've learned about these pins and listing them and researching them a little is there's, there's different colors and there's different like color schemes to them. And those seem to drive the value a little bit based on the different color schemes, not only just the, the animal, but also what color it is. Um, so I paid under $100 for each of them. Um, one of them was 87, we got 98, 87, 66. So I'm not really sure how these are gonna do. I'm I'm not really sure. I've seen them sell uh, $120. I've seen them sell for $50. And I didn't know this at the time because I didn't comp them. I just thought, well, those are really neat. I feel like I can make money on those. And so I guess we'll collectively see if that pans out or not. I don't typically look up comps when I'm out shopping. It's, you know, uh, I probably should sometimes, but I don't usually look up comps. And, and occasionally I just buy stuff that I feel like I can make money on. And sometimes I lose money and sometimes I make money and it all works out in the end. For instance, this next piece, um, this is Juliana. It was a Juliana custom jewelry set. There was a bracelet. It's Juliana D and E and I believe it was Del Deliza, Deliza and um, I can't remember the other name. But it, but it was a set that they designed and, and the series was called Juliana. They typically had hang tags. Uh, they're not marked. 
but there are certain characteristics of these pieces. For instance, if you turn it over, you can see that some of the stones are actually open. Um, they're not completely closed, if that makes sense, where they, um, the settings. And uh, they're just, they're very three-dimensional. There's a whole lot that goes into identifying these pieces. I found that out um, as I was researching them. But they can sell anywhere from like $100 to $1,200. It's insane, the, the price range of these pieces. And looking at them, I had no indication of, well, this is what makes these ones sell for more and this is what makes these ones sell for less. And usually whenever I'm looking up comps, I like to study the patterns of, okay, well, this is what makes this sell for more and this is what, the, and then I remember that and that's how I go about thrifting and picking and I remember patterns and I analyze patterns and that's how I, how I operate is by patterns and seeing patterns. Um, I didn't see any patterns with the Juliana stuff, so I'm not really sure what makes it sell for more or less. However, I listed it, I paid $88 for the Juliana set. It was, again, bracelet, necklace, and coordinating earrings. I don't think that they were originally of the same set. I think that they just match. Paid $88, and I believe they're already over $100. So that was great. That was fantastic. Um, they are absolutely stunning. I actually considered keeping them for my brother's wedding, which is coming up in a few, few weeks. Oh yeah. Ooh, a few weeks. I better get ready and get a dress and stuff for that. Um, <laughs> so I considered keeping them, but I decided, you know what? I will probably break out in a rash because I can't wear costume jewelry. So I'm going to pass them along. They are absolutely stunning. The way they glitter in the light, whew, it's amazing. Okay, the next piece is Silver Inn. This was the, uh, the silver set. It was marked 800 silver and it was a bracelet, necklace, and earring set. Now when I got the piece home, and this isn't listed yet because when I got it home and I was looking it over, I do believe it is silver, but it's not marked silver anywhere. Uh, but it made me nervous to list that. So I kind of held off for a little bit. Um, I do suspect that it is silver just in appearance in the tarnish. Um, but I paid $30.40 for that after discounts and I still have to get that listed. I, I'm not sure yet if I feel comfortable listing it as Italy without having it marked as Italy, but I do I do strongly believe that it is silver just because the way it is tarnished. And um, so I have, to, I have to list that. And I would expect probably for that set to sell for like $65, 45 to 65. Um, next, we have the beaded Millefiori necklace. It was absolutely beautiful. And I'm not sure if it's a necklace or if someone just strung beads on some wire because when I got it, I was like looking for a clasp and it has no clasp. But it does like, it, it would fit over my head. It's 12 inches, like if you strung it out, it's 12 inches. So I guess technically in a circle, it is 24 inches. But yeah, it, it would, the beads were just amazing. I mean, they were so colorful and so fun. You guys know me and my colorful and fun. I paid $29.75 for that necklace and I would expect probably to get about $65 for that. That's about what we have been getting for our Millefiore necklaces. And this one was just, it had, it even had little beads that had inlaid rhinestones and um, inlaid little chips of metal, like silver. It was really, really pretty. And last but not least, we've got our snail. <laughs> Our Murano Art Glass Snail, which is really cool because we don't come across a lot of snails. And we don't come across a lot of snails in that size. Normally they're like little Murano snails or little Murano birds, but this is a large Murano snail. Uh, and it was just really cool. I'm, I, you know, normally I don't gravitate towards the clear, but I love that it was clear and then the shell was smoky. It was just a really interesting piece. We paid. $52 for the snail. And for the snail, I would probably expect to get $85 to $120 for the Murano snail. Um, it was just really neat. And I love the size of it, the quality of it. It was pretty amazing. So as you can see, we're going to make money on this stuff. But my whole point in doing the haul video is, yes, we spent $935, and that is a lot of money to spend. And a lot of people are like, well, I would never spend that much money at an antique mall. 
and and just because they make these videos and I say I spent $935 doesn't mean you have to go and spend $935. You could buy any one of these items. You could buy the little cat figurine for $2.50. I think it's what it's $2. For $2. No, I spent $5. You, you know what? You could buy any one of these items and you could make a profit on just one of these items. There's no, there's no reason why you need to buy all of them. There's no reason why you need to spend $935. That's just how I operate at this point. We, we deal a lot in volume and we buy a lot of volume and we flip a lot of volume and we, we have a lot of listings that go through. I mean, right now we don't have a lot listed, but every day we sell 25 to 30 items every single day and we're shipping them out every single day. So we deal in a lot of volume and we can bring in that amount of stuff. Um, but that doesn't mean any, that doesn't mean you have to, you can go to the antique shops and I, I can promise you, you'll find at least one item that you can buy and flip for a profit. Um, you just, you just have to be aware and you have to, you have to be smart about it, I guess is what I'm saying. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and, um, I hope it brought some value to you, <laughs> but I'm going to go finish my coffee. I'm going to edit this video and then I'm going to go out today and I'm going to go do some more sourcing and find some more stuff um, and and make it a good day. So, um, oh, before I end, I will let you know that the bonfire campaign is still running and I think it's seven more days. We've got one more week left in this bonfire campaign. It is the Missing Lid Conspiracy merch. A lot of you are asking, like, why aren't you wearing your shirt? Because I was silly and I got a sweatshirt. And honestly, it's just really hot to wear it all the time. So I, I actually contacted the company and asked them for a tank top. And it should be here soon, but I, I'm afraid it's going to be here after the campaign is over. But I did get a tank top. Um, but I guess it is the Missing Lid Conspiracy, and the campaign ends on April 26th, 2021. <laughs> and uh, all of the orders will be shipping out on or around May 4th, 2021. So you can expect to get them then. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see all of you tomorrow, later. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you spotted something you just can't live without, we do post 25 to 30 new items in our eBay shop every single day, and I've posted a link to that down in the description.